Hello everybody. Managers who are building up machine learning teams or machine learning practitioners who are just getting started need to set up a good machine learning and, and deep learning environment. There are so many choices out there that it could be confusing at first and you could spend days trying to figure out the best configuration. With the philosophy of keeping it powerful, keeping it free, keeping it simple, here's an environment that will work great for most people as of June 2017. Now things are changing fast, but this is a good starting point. Let's start out with the best basic programming language for machine learning. That happens to be Python. Now some people use R, but R is more of a statistical package and, a, and is a little more complicated. There is a lot more work being done on Python to configure it as a machine learning language. So that's your best bet if you had a choice. On top of Python, you would have NumPy, which is a numerical package, and it's useful for things like matrix multiplication and so on. On top of NumPy, you have SkyPy, which is a scientific package, and it's again very useful for machine learning. There's a framework for machine learning that sits on top of SkyPy, and it's called SkyKit-Learn. This is the most common machine learning framework that is useful, so you'll need that as well. There's a framework called TensorFlow that's useful for deep learning. Now I distinguish between deep learning and machine learning because machine learning includes most of the traditional algorithms while deep learning includes more of the neural network kind of uh, structure. And TensorFlow is a good option for that. There are a couple of other frameworks for deep learning such as CAFE and Theano, but for this environment, we're not going to consider those. TensorFlow is a good enough substitute. On top of TensorFlow, you could have Keras, which is an even easier to use deep learning framework. In fact, Keras uses TensorFlow or it could sit on top of uh, Theano or CAFE as well. But for this purpose, we could say that TensorFlow, um, that Keras sits on top of TensorFlow and it's a much easier framework to use than TensorFlow. However, you do have the power of everything under the stack. So in fact, from Keras, you could use TensorFlow or you could use SkyKit, uh, SkyKit Learn or SkyPy or NumPy or Python if you want to get to that level of detail. Python itself has a number of libraries and one of the more useful ones is called matplotlib. This allows you to visualize your data and create three-dimensional and two-dimensional plots of it. Pandas is another one of those libraries that's useful, and this is useful for handling data, or specifically data frames, into which you can load your data and then pass it on to these algorithms. So Panda is another useful package, or a library. On top of Python, people have built a lot of libraries, and there are about 124,000 lib different libraries. Among those, Matlib and Pandas is the most common, are the commonly used ones. I'll mention a few other libraries soon enough. If you want to do any kind of machine vision or computer vision, then OpenCV is a tool or a, a package that can be used for that purpose. It's actually built on C. However, it has been integrated with Python with wrappers so you can access OpenCV from or through Python. If you want to start using natural language processing, then there are packages available. One of the more famous ones is Core NLP that's built on top of Java, but just like OpenCV, it has it can be invoked through uh, Python because it has wrappers for Python. There's another library for speech recognition, which is called speech recognition, and um, that can also be used if you are interested in that. So you get the point. There are multiple libraries and packages that, that are in the ecosystem of this machine learning environment, which can be used very effectively for machine and learning and deep learning. Let me talk a little bit about the data, because machine learning or deep learning essentially consumes a lot of data. Where does this data come from? One option is it could come from a CSV file, and the format is CSV, and there are a number of tools that can handle CSV, one of them being a text editor. Another could be a spreadsheet, 
um, or an Excel file that is handled by Microsoft Excel. Yet another data source could be a relational database, uh, and one of those could be Oracle or other tools, other relational database tools. Yet another source of da data could be a JSON file, a binary JSON file, and uh, MongoDB is one of the tools that could read and write JSON files. Or your data could be stored on a distributed file system and could be invoked by, and one of the tools that handle, or that handle distributed file systems is Hadoop. So you get the point. There are multiple data sources and this could be fed into the machine learning system and the source could come from multiple formats. So that was the free stuff. Now if you want to get into paid stuff, Amazon has conveniently packaged a lot of these into their Amazon Web Services. So it's much more convenient for you to use it if you wanted to. In fact, you could even use one of their databases or data storage service, which is simple storage service, to manage the data. Of course, if you use this red part, you have to pay for it. There are other machine learning service providers as well, such as Google, who has a cloud platform and a machine learning platform. So how do you install all this conveniently? Do you have to do an one by one install? Actually, the answer is no. If you go to www.continuum.io, there is a package called Anaconda. And if you install Anaconda, you'll get most of these packages. And if you want to install additional packages, it's a pretty simple statement. So Anaconda includes in its installation the basic Python, NumPy, and SkyPy. And if you want to add other packages such as SkyKit-Learn, TensorFlow, or Keras, all you have to do is a give a simple command like a pip install. One other thing that uh, Anaconda provides you is an installation of a simple, easy to use web-based um, interface to interact with this whole ecosystem. And that's the Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook al allows you to write code and uh, script, um, intermingle the both and write your notes right on the um, page. So that keeps all your code and comments and everything else together and easy to use and easy to read. I started out with the goal of being simple, but there are so many variations that one could consider and I haven't obviously considered all of them. If you have any feedback or updates, please send them my way and hope you enjoy setting up your environment. And here's Raj wishing you the best in your machine learning and deep learning future. Thanks for watching.